Hello, and welcome to a special edition of the Hashtag Am Writing Podcast, The Working Bookshelf, aka Hashtag Am Reading About Writing. I am KJ Delantonia, the New York Times bestselling author of The Chicken Sisters and How to Be a Happier Parent and a former editor at The Times. And this is Blackberry. Oh, I'm Jenny Nash, author, book coach, entrepreneur, and creator of the book coach certification program at Author Accelerator. And I do not have a dog in my lap to share. <laughs> well, that's okay, because on an audio, uh, we all have dogs in our laps, <laughs> right? So it's only if you're watching on YouTube that you can see the adorable poodle that I am clutching to my heart. Um, in every episode, of this series, Jenny and I are discussing and debating a pair of popular books on writing focusing on a specific topic like structure, creativity, or productivity. We're going to tell you why these books are our favorites, then engage in heated debate over which is better in our Fight Me segment before in I, I can't say that word, inevitably getting sidetracked into a discussion of the topic itself. I can't decide if that's the best part or if Fight my, Me is the best part. They're both the best part. Fight me. But in any case, the result will be hashtag am writing's usual actionable inspirational advice that can help you get your work done, whether you are a seasoned pro or just getting started or changing genres or, you know, wherever you stand in the writing career. Today, we're talking about books that we turn to when it's time to edit or revise. And I am talking about one of the most beloved books on my working bookshelf, which is The Artful Edit by Susan Bell. Nice. I'm not actually sure that I have read that. So, but I'm sure that I've read something that's been influenced by it because against Jenny's protests, I am talking about Blueprint Before a Book by Jenny Nash. You can get down. <laughs> um, because, yeah, yeah. So this one's new but you can get it. And I, I was going to talk about something else, but the thing is I just worked my way through a really uh, difficult revision. And it was like the third difficult revision of this particular book. And I didn't even set out to use Jenny's revising method. And when I got to the end of it, I looked at what I had done and I was like, well, I just used Jenny's revising method. <laughs> Like, I, I'm in your head. Uh, yeah, you totally are. So I really just felt like I have to talk about this one because it has um, shaped my revision techniques. Well, I think I shall start out by talking about my book because that's just too embarrassing to, to have you start out talking about mine. So this book by Susan Bell was an editor for, for many years at Random House. And this book... I think is, well, the, the subtitle is On the Practice of Editing Yourself. And I think this book is absolutely genius. And there are two, I mean, there's really one main idea which has two components, which, which he teaches in this, in this, it's a slim little book. It's so elegant. It's so just easy to understand. And he's, this idea, this big idea is the separation of macro edits and micro edits. And she has lists of what macro edits and micro edits are. And it's this basic, beautiful, elegant idea of don't do the micro edits first. <laughs> and it may seem sort of obvious, but I think the vast majority of people think that revision is what we learned in fifth grade. And I have nothing against fifth grade teachers. I mean, bless them. But, you know, it's the idea that Maybe there's a better word. Maybe you missed your comma splice thing here. Maybe you needed another sentence to develop this idea more. It's, it's, it's editing at the red pencil level. And many of us, when we think about revision, that's what we think about. And really revision is much more macro than that. And Susan Bell's list of macro, she has this macro edit diagnostic checklist and it's got things on it like intention what is what am I trying to do here like I, I mean I love that and then things like structure rhythm and tension those big ideas of how how a book unfolds things like 
uh, foreshadowing, continuity of tone, these big, big ideas. And by forcing yourself to move through this macro edit diagnostic checklist, you get yourself out of that space of red pencil, micro mm-hmm. minutia stuff. And it, so, so that's the big idea of this book. And, and then the thing that she does, the whole last third of it is, um, examples from writers that uh, famous writers. So she does, uh, Michael Ondaatje. I, I don't know if I'm saying his name. The English, the English patient. Yeah. And more recently, um, that new one. Yeah. <laughs> that I really liked. I didn't read the, the English patient. I really loved his new one, but I don't know um, the name. Yeah. So, so he's one of the, um, people and, and the great Gatsby is one of the people mm-hmm. and, and she's literally taking chunks of their texts and showing how they moved from this, this version to this version and what they did and the, the, the macro and micro things that they did. And it's the big changes are always the most jaw dropping, the big macro changes, you know, like I, I, I'm making this up because I haven't read that part in a long time, but it's something like, oh my gosh, the great Gatsby was a totally different point of view, totally right. different point of view character before, or, you know, whatever the big idea it is, but she, she shows them in action in this very specific way. And so I just adore this book for its, its big idea of getting getting through to the writer that editing and revising is a different process than writing. It's a different process and you need to approach it with a different mindset and a different set of tools. And, and that is what you take away from this, this read. It's pretty, it's pretty spectacular. I am, I am going to get it and I'm going to read it (laughs) and it's possible that I have already read it, but um, but I want to. So I, I went with Jenny's blueprint for a book and now she's going to sit there and look embarrassed. Um, but so this is not a book about revising and yet this is a book about revising. So this is a book that it would be great to get and follow from the very beginning. But even if you do that, because I have and do, and it's a prettier color if I tilt it. <laughs> um, if you get it and follow it from the very beginning, you will still need to use it to to revise. And what I love about it is that it's really moving you through the process of seeing your whole book because it's very hard to hold a whole book in your head. And I. Um, I don't, I still don't necessarily, I can look back at the chicken sisters and there are some things where I'm like, is that still in there? Cause I don't even remember. Like it just, cause it was in there and now it's not. And, and certainly that's, that's true of the book that I'm revising right now, which is called In Her Boots and will be out next summer, um, summer of 2022, if you're watching this sometime in the future. And so when you get that book, like when you've written the end and now you're going to get back in there and dig into it, either because your editor has said or your agent has said, you know, I don't think that that you nailed this character or, you know, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not feeling the emotion or, or, or just because it's your, you know, you wrote your first draft and now you're going to get back in it. You have to step back like Susan Bell says, and look at the whole thing. So to go through the exercises in Blueprint for a book that are at the beginning, um, which are things like, why did you write this book? Uh, What is your, you know, what, what is the, um, what's the sort of central theme of the book? And, you know, it can, like every book can be Love Conquers All. It's totally fine. You don't feel like you have to have some magical new theme, but what is it? You got to have one. Um, or it just it doesn't mean anything. And then writing your back of the book copy. Um, and then also just, you know, figuring out what your characters want. You did all that to write the book or you should have, and maybe you did it before, maybe you did, you know, maybe you did it sort of as you were, were progressing through, but you gotta come back out and do it again when you revise because it'll have changed. Um, so what's really interesting yeah. about this, um, KJ, and I don't think you know this, but I developed the inside outline, which is the idea at the center of this blueprint for a book book um, as a revision tool. That's exactly how I developed it. 
And, and I developed it for the following reason. As a book coach, I get to see a lot of manuscripts that are not working. <laughs> that is the thing that I do. And I found, you know, when I did this enough over and over and over again, and then I began training book coaches and they were doing it over and over and over again. So the number of touches on problems that I saw was really large. And, and what I realized was that I was in a position to see more bad books than a lot of other people because agents don't read the whole bad book. They, sure. they read one or five or 10 pages and it's either I'll, I'll read more or I won't. It, certainly editors are not reading bad books because they're not getting to their desk. So like the, who reads a lot of bad books? And I was in that position. And what I realized was that people were doing the same things over and over and over and over again, wrong. And so what I initially wanted to do, my, my big entrepreneurial idea was I should design a tool that everybody would use before they start to write to prevent these problems. And that was my big idea. And I tried to start selling that idea. And guess what? Nobody wants to believe that they haven't already done the things that, you know, it's that we talked in our last episode about the shitty first draft. That's so ingrained in what people do. Nobody wants to, to get the help before they start to write. And so what I realized from an entrepreneurial perspective is I can't actually sell the thing that everybody should do before they start to write because nobody wants to buy it. So what I have to do is meet them where they are, which is they've written this shitty first draft and it's got holes and problems and difficulties. How are we going to fix it? And so I devised this method of asking a series of questions that sneakily got them to do the work they should have done in the first place. <laughs> So that, that actually is where it came from and why Maybe you can't do that work until you've screwed it up a few times. So I could debate that with you and go on either side of it. And I not meaning within a single draft, but meaning as a, as a writer, like maybe you have to have um, you know, written a few books that then killed you because you didn't put the time in beforehand. And maybe it's not even that. It's not even now I want to do it. Maybe you don't even know how. Like no matter, you, you know, you read this and you think you've done those things, but you didn't, you know, you didn't get deep enough. You didn't go far enough. You didn't. And it's not until you've had to get in there and correct it all uh, so or here's find the it thing. all. It's just a thought. The thing is going to come to you in a form of question. Because I think you, KJ Delantonia, are uniquely um, wired to not mind doing a lot of work and throwing it out. You, you, it's remarkable. You write really fast. You write, you write a lot, and then if it's not right, you're like, Zoop, it's gone. And I mean, I'm talking about 350 pages over and over and over again. Yeah, and, I, I think I minded this time. <laughs> but man, I mind, I mind, I did. But, but if I, I have often said this, if I could design a four-year college for learning how to write a novel, and, and that reason that I picked that metaphor and that time frame is that why do we think this, could, this is only going to take a year? <laughs> who, who decided that it's only going to take a year or, or six months or, or whatever? It, it often takes a long time. And if I were to design that, that curriculum, what it would be would be, okay, freshmen, or maybe that's a term we don't use anymore, first year students, uh, what you're going to do in the first year is you're going to write an uh, entire novel that at the end of the year you will throw out. So let's, let's do that. Here we go. That's what you do. And you don't get to go to your second year until you have done that. That that's what I would do. And, and I would still have them do the blueprint before they started writing that, that uh, book that they're going to throw out because people often ask me, because a lot of the steps in the blueprint are about um, stating your goal, stating your point, stating your reasons for doing this, stating uh, who you're going to be doing it for, your ideal readers. And people often get squirmy about that. And they say, I don't know, I, I write to find my way. 
And, and I, I'm a writer too. I write to find my way as well, but the, the, the power of having a target and at least getting your arrow on the target, even if it's not in the bullseye, you know, then that first year novel that you're going to throw out is at least on target. And then you can do the next draft and get it closer to the bullseye with the same tools. But if you don't use those tools, the arrows are flying off all over the place into wherever, and it's really a hot mess. So, so that's my, that's my testimonial. <laughs> no, my testament. I don't know. That's my, me on my soapbox, but yeah, I mean, you have to go back and do those, those big picture things. And then, um, there is a section in here on revising and I just, I really, I think, you know, I can tell you're informed by Susan Bell because your, your method is, you call it the stoplight method and it's great. And it's like, you know, uh, red things that, you know, big things. Um, like I just, I just read a, a few chapters for a friend and um, they were lots of like, there was, there were two time periods and one time period was great. And the other time period was clearly only there to tell, show you why she got to the first time period. There was, it didn't have its own story. Mm. Or I think actually it does, but it didn't in the four chapters that I read. And so, but so the first chapter of it didn't feel, it just felt like this is why it's, it felt like backstory. But if you're going to do it, like if you're going to do a whole book in alternating timelines, which she is, it can't, it's not backstory, right? Right. So that's a red light issue. Right. Like, you know, and I had tons of red light issues in this thing that I just, <laughs> tons, tons, tons. And then there's sort of the yellow stuff. So I would actually, so I was changing from third person to first person. Mm -hmm. I would actually call that a yellow light because mm. it's not that hard. It's, it's painful, but it's just doing it, mm. you know? So red light for what I just did was, um, uh, the reason that she does something in the, like the, you know, two thirds of the way through the novel, my agent was like, okay, I, I don't feel sorry for her because she is really like the reason that she made this mistake that costs her so much is a is because she was being a, like she was trying to show somebody she was as a it's not a sympathetic reason mm. that's a red issue like that required a fair amount of, of and then you know green stuff is is her hair red through the whole book right and, and I was absolutely informed by Susan Bell by this and also by a book we talked about in an earlier episode the situation and the story by Vivian Gornick that book introduced me to the idea of that there that stories operate on multiple levels and that oftentimes what new writers are focusing on is just the one level the top level and that what really accomplished writers are doing is operating on multiple levels and so that's where I got introduced to that idea and I think Susan Bell reinforced that idea in my mind of the different kinds of editing and the different ways of looking at the same piece of writing. And, you know, they all reinforce this idea that writing a novel, it, this goes to what we started talking about. People think that it should be easy because when you sit down to read a novel and let's say it's a novel that you just are having, a, a, adoring, have a, gr a great time with. Um, I, I am reading such a novel right now. It is uh, The X Talk by uh, Rachel oh, Lynn Solomon. Sure, I know that one. So much fun. It's just like a rom-com summer, yeah. delightful, fun. Easy reading is hard writing. Oh my gosh. And when, when you're immersed in a book like that, you, you're you so it just swept away by it that you think, I could do this. I could yeah. totally do this. I could just take a little idea and I could just pick it out. And, and, it's, and it's a romance, so you know how it ends. Right. And it's like, this isn't hard. I could, I could do this. And the, you know, we forget that that writing a novel is a massively complex intellectual undertaking with a great number of moving parts and things you have to know and master. And the, the artful edit breaks it down in such a way that you're like, oh, oh, this is why it's hard. And here's, here's how I could approach thinking about it. And what what my method does is try, try to give a cohesive 
process for doing that before you start or when you're revising. So I, I would say it's more uh, strategic. Uh, Su Susan Bell's book is, is um, a lot of really very useful ideas, but it doesn't offer a process, if that makes sense. Right. Well, what made me laugh is that I did not set out to do red light, yellow light, green light on this edit, just because, although I have in the past, I, because my editor had given it to me, you know, and it was a, it was a revision based on her editorial letter. So I did not in my mind think that I had set out to make a red, and then I looked at what I did I could have written red, like there are lists. There are, you know, two, totally different lists. And there's, there's there. And then when I did it, I went through for the red light stuff and I did the yellow light stuff at the same time because the primary yellow light thing was the changing from, from third person to first person. And oh my goodness, was that ever painful. Um, and now people in the hashtag M writing group are like all bagging on first person. And I'm like, people, if you think that's easy, <laughs> go ahead, go for it. I mean, because it's not. So, so there's a, a thing that I teach, a tool that I teach in my book coach uh, training course, which is called the hierarchy of editorial concerns. And it, it looks like Maslow's hierarchy of, gosh, what do you call his famous thing? Hierarchy of needs. Is it just called needs? Hierarchy yeah, it's needs. the hierarchy of needs. Right. So it's, it's, it's a spoof basically on that. But the hierarchy of editorial needs for the book coach is don't start at the tip of the of the pyramid of the little things that need fixing because that's just a total waste of time. Like you just said, you're you're not gonna solve the dialogue in a scene that you're gonna cut. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that I mean my friend that I just edited the four chapters for, she was missing some commas here and there. I didn't even tell her. Right. Because it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter right now. I mean, right? yeah, so there's just there's some other stuff to be done, um, which and she's this is like a bazillionth revision, which is totally what's happening. It is what happens to all of us. It feels, I mean, when you get really good, when you're Serena Bowen, you can, you can, you know, your third revision maybe is done, but when you're me uh, uh, and most of us, you're not. Most people, most people. It's, it's really true. Um, well, I, I mean, I have said the reasons why I love the, the artful edit but I'm fine letting my book win this round. If, <laughs> if, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We declare, we declare a blueprint for a book, the winner. And I can add that it's $3.99 on Amazon. So um, well worth the, the investment. I can't, I just, go, I just go back to this. So just constantly. And now I, now I'm going to try to use it to, to start again when I'm ready to start again, which will be momentarily. Well, I appreciate your your support of it, and I and I should publicly state that you helped me name the inside outline, which is the tool at the center of the blueprint for a book. It used to be called the two tier outline, which um, I loved because the two tiers of a story are what most often goes missing in, in all those books I was talking about that we saw over and over and over and over again. Like, what's the common thing? And the common thing is somewhere someone is missing the second the second tier which is why is this here why does it matter why do we care right. yeah. why is the character even telling us this or experiencing this that that underlying why tier and and you said yeah but nobody knows what that means if they don't if they don't know what you're talking about what are the two tiers what is that and and uh, we brainstormed and came up with the inside outline which, which is such a good name it's such a good name. So I thank you for, for that and, and for your support of, of the book. I'm, I'm proud of it and excited for it to be out in the world. Well, we have had so much fun doing this um, special summer series of the Writer's Bookshelf. And I, this, is, this is the end for the moment. I'm sure it is not the end for the end. But um, next week, there'll be a regular episode of the Hashtag Am Writing Podcast. Serena and Jess will be back. We will probably be reporting on how we spent our summer vacation. Uh, you know, essays will be expected and graded. So, and then we'll let you know what's coming next because we've got plans and ideas and all of our usual shiny thing stuff. All right. I guess I should say, do you, can you remember it? Do you want to oh, say it? Okay, oh, it's been 10 times. No, I think I can. Let me try. Let me try. Keep your butt in the chair. 
uh, and your head in the game. And that's it. Keep and that's butt, it. Keep your butt in your chair and your head in the game. Woo, you did it. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Please uh, join us in the Facebook group, which is uh, Am Writing on Facebook. Respond to our weekly emails about various essay or various um, episodes. If you want, if you don't get those, you can find out how to get them at amwritingpodcast.com. You can support the show there as well. And we are always delighted to hear from you. All right. Thanks. And we are signing out. Bye.